Now, I would like to invite our three panelists to the podium so that you can ask your burning questions. Dr. Benaragama, Dr. Dalamulle, and Professor Disanayak. If you have any questions or clarifications, please come out so that you know. Thank all the panelists. I mean, that was a wealth of knowledge given to us. Roger, I mean, it sounds so easy. Yeah. In the sense, I mean, we are having so much of problems of all this fake medicine and uh, all these imports from everywhere and so. I'm just asking the DVGLS, right? Can we? Can we try out? He says, I mean, barcoding. And then uh, g uh, get it to know uh, what is the truth. So we, we have so much of allegations because I, we have been serving in the uh, Ministry of Health in all um, aspects, right? So can we do it? I'm just asking. I mean, he sounds so, it's so simple. Can we do it? Yes, we can. And uh, it's, as uh, Professor very correctly said, it's not very costly thing. And the only thing is all the legitimate or, uh, you know, registered medicines, the pack should be having a barcode and uh, even at the uh, but, but counter, yeah. right, the patient uh, should be able to, you know, uh, scan the barcode mm. and immediately it will, if you are having an app in the mobile, it will appear whether it's a fake one or not. So, you know, that is as simple as that. The barcodes are so simple. I mean, you find it in <laughs> yes. all the... Yes. Uh, all, uh, yeah. uh, so, I mean... And it, also... How to make it a legitimate uh, uh, policy, that that would yes. be the... So, idea. under uh, National Medicinal Regulatory uh, Act, you know, now Act is in place only to bring in a regulation which the Minister of Health uh, can do. So only to introduce a new regulation, that's all. Uh, there's a matter of maybe two, three days or maybe two weeks, right? And also uh, to, to, to uh, prevent uh, fake uh, drugs coming into the market, what you have to do is, of course, following the good storage fact practices. So if the supply chain starting from manufacturer up to the patient is pool proof there's no way that fake drugs get into the uh, get into the supply chain I, if i were to add to that i think um, uh, i heard that um, now uh, one of the biggest problems that we are having is compliance no, on drugs um, so i think um, uh, the there is regulation coming uh, in Europe uh, where they are moving from, uh, uh, you know, not just uh, now giving the, uh, the individual uh, medicines in different packs, but to, you know, if you are, uh, let's say, um, uh, prescribing a, a drug, you know, in the morning dose, these are, let's say there are three drugs, right, whatever, not only antibodies, but whatever. Then in the morning dose, you have to take these, these. Uh, uh, in the uh, uh, noon, you have to take something. No, evening you have to take another. So these should, uh, there is regulation coming up in e Europe where you are now saying you have to pack these individually and give. Not, uh, I don't know what it is called. I am not in the pharmaceutical industry as such, so I don't know what uh, what that is called. So, um, uh, so now, uh, so once you move to that, uh, then this business of just. Uh, uh, you know, giving one pack of antibiotics or what, one pack of whatever other drug uh, is going to go away. And um, uh, so this may be something in the future. But when that happens, uh, lots of these uh, r uh, things related to fake drugs, supply chain and so on will go away. And I know, in fact, um, there are a few uh, 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 companies in Sri Lanka who are trying to, you know, do this uh, online drug now. So one is uh, health net. So the health net is uh, now introducing that individual packing. So um, uh, so that uh, you know if somebody was to order it, they um, 
directly sourced from the manufacturer and what you will get is a seri uh, you know a, a long cartridge of things which say okay morning dose all the drugs which should go to that are there so if you are like a chronic uh, like you know as you know like all these um, uh, people who are um, old who are taking lots of drugs uh, uh, their morning dose of everything will be packed together and given uh, noon night everything uh, so that there's there'll be more compliance and so on so that kind of technologies are also coming into the picture it will be a different world another 10 15 years down the line because and we will have to adopt these technologies and it will so i think uh, for state pharmaceutical in, uh, manufacturing corporation and so on they will save a lot of money if they actually use it, um, because otherwise you know you just give drugs nobody uses uh, they throw away and compliance is very poor all this can be overcome A little comment on that, really. Yeah. We should uh, really assess the, to which extent the patient should have access for the medicine. Now, currently anybody can access medicine without even prescription at the, the pharmacy level. I know that uh, we have been doing a very big uh, uh, process and I think uh, Professor, uh, Dr. Benadagama visited Hambantot about 10 years back in terms of uh, uh, really searching about the counterfeit drugs and the pharmacy practices. I think at that time you were the uh, drug author, he was in drug authority. Uh, now the practice is little change. Now when you go to the pharmacy, sometimes they ask, do you have a prescription? Then it's a really good trend. But we have to be very careful about the online purchase. That is one of the biggest danger, even though we put a lot of regulation in terms of getting medicine from the pharmacies. But now, in USA, most of the people, they have a very easy access for the medicine through the online purchase. So, especially antibiotics, it's so dangerous if, if you give a big access from the online marketing and on online sales. However, there's a good way as well now. Why patient needs to go to pharmacy? They can order from online with a prescription. That is one of the way of the, the saving time and the money. And even the way, very big regulation, then we, we can't really monitor what is happening. Those are the good initiatives if you can do it, but we should know to what extent we need to have the regulation. Just to add to what he said, uh, online prescription prescribing is of course, fast, good, no, no, no problem about it. Issue is the e-dispensing. Uh, means without a prescription, people can go to a website and uh, order the drug. So there's no any supervision by a medical officer. Because I have attended a, a workshop in France organized by Interpol. Because this has become a you know, huge problem in Western countries, US and all, and there have been many deaths. Uh, so you can't, uh, you know, block these websites. If you block thousand today, ten thousand would come next day because it's so profitable. And uh, therefore, is prescribing uh, with a prescription and then you know dispensing the medicine is okay, as you all know. Uh, but uh, if you uh, allow this e-dispensing, it is going to be an issue. First, uh, complimentary comment. Uh, actually, all three presentations uh, recreated uh, real eye-opening, especially the regulation. I also agree to that, what Dr. Benderkam said. Uh, I just want to ask uh, this question. This refers to the uh, um, procurement of uh, effective drugs at competitive price. Don't you think that uh, Sri Lanka is not uh, really utilizing the available avenues like uh, e-procurement uh, platforms like Vembu and also uh, pooled procurement mechanisms which are available and other countries are really using that? Yeah. <laughs> of course, pooled uh, procurement is good for especially the drugs which are required in small quantities like uh, what do you call it? orphan drugs you know drugs often drugs means the drugs which are uh, which are which are required for the to treat uh, 
illnesses with very low prevalence. So that's good for that. So um, we can, uh, you know, get uh, the other countries uh, around like Maldives, you know, few countries and then order. And even uh, not only for medicines, maybe the say laboratory items where, you know, the quantities of reagents or whatever are required in very small quantities because otherwise the manufacturers or the suppliers are not interested. So the administrative cost is more than the, 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 the revenue they get from this thing. Uh, use as I've already pulled. Ah, yes. E-procurement is a good, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a very good thing, of course. Only thing is government should take a policy decision. And still in Sri Lanka, that, uh, that, that, that decision has not been taken. So it's a very good thing, of course. It, it will, it will uh, you know, fast uh, or make it fast. The process should be uh, good price and uh, transparent. Uh, so that's right, yes. This policy decision has been taken, and we are we are working with the fi Ministry of Finance, and the first uh, very first one will appear uh, in next week from the Ministry of Health. So we have no option, Madam. We have to follow that. E not only us, and we are proud because the Health Ministry is the first uh, uh, stakeholder who is going to actually use that e-procurement portal designed by the uh, Ministry of uh, Finance. So uh, we have no option. You will have to follow the e procurement. So first, first, first bid uh, documents will appear next week uh, from our ministry. Yes, May not, not, be not good very good for, for many people, but <laughs> <laughs> invariably we have to follow it. And not only us. There's the beginning is health ministry. Then after that, um, and I uh, just a uh, compliment on Suranga and is my colleague, and I'm very proud of. We have so many international exposures like this. And uh, I just uh, uh, as you had this history of the pharmaceutical industry in Sri Lanka, uh, if you can, can I spend two minutes and describe the current situation, uh, it would have been really good about uh, uh, about the manufacturing of antibiotics currently. What is the situation? Yes, uh, you know after this uh, decision of giving the buyback guarantee to the manufacturers, because Sri Lanka is having a smaller market compared to, you know, India and the other countries. So without buyback guarantee, I don't think that anybody would uh, invest in uh, pharmaceutical industry. So, so that was granted. Uh, and now many uh, companies have set up already, I think two or three new uh, investors have set up their factories. One is at uh, Bandaragam, the other one is in Kandy. Navista and I can't remember the name of the other one because Navista contributed to our function one million. <laughs> Being a local manufacturer, I allowed them to have a display board as well. Anyway, so um, uh, the other thing is they should look for the uh, export market. Uh, to um, there are so many advantages. One thing is, of course, uh, to make sure the quality and the other uh, parameters. It's very easy because we, I mean, easily accessible. Uh, we can visit these factories, you know, um, within a few minutes. Uh, the other thing is the um, I have to tell about the SPMC products. You know, the quality is very good. Within my 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 five-year tenure at uh, CDDA, only once one. Was product failed. Otherwise, quality is very uh, good. Only thing is the overhead costs uh, are little high and that's why their prices are higher than the imported Indian medicines. But, you know, but you can't compromise the quality uh, for price. And also it's our, 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 <laughs> our money, <laughs> local, uh, this thing. Uh, so that's good. If I add a little bit on that, really, in my presentation, uh, it nicely exp uh, explained about the affinity of the industry towards the country. If country is big, market is big, the affinity is really good. Now, uh, the India was really approached by Merck, installation of the uh, penicillin plant, where the Egypt as well as Pakistan was approached by many other organizations. But Sri Lanka was not approached for 
the antibiotic plants since the market is not that good. The secondly, we have to think about the, uh, the current situation as well. Now look, uh, uh, even antivenom, we try to have a, uh, get down some uh, factories to Sri Lanka, but they are really looking for India. Since the, our market is very much less, as well as our investment, and uh, if we can't give a buyback guarantee for them, nobody, mm, they tend to come. The other important factor for the antibiotics <coughs> and any production plan, when you do in locally, the cost is so much high compared to the international competitive market. It was nicely explained in my presentation as well. When India started to do the pharmaceutical business, earlier the price was higher than the world market. Now, their price is much lower than the world market. That's due to the time and their expertise gained during the last 70 years. The perspective on us, India has limited its exports. In some countries, you can't buy masks. It's so much shortages, and China now is not producing, I'm not, I'm not selling some. So it's good for a country like us to think about producing even a little bit, don't you think so? Yes, uh, now maybe a few years ago this idea came up, now we are, we have started now manufacturing medicines, uh, so we must think of, uh, you know, uh, manufacturing the devices as well, this, uh, Mass can all are categorized as medical devices. So this it's not, a, as he said, this, these things are not rocket science. Yeah. You know, <laughs> manufacturing a COVID-95 mask is, I mean, very simple. So we are producing few, few, few uh, devices, but of course, uh, the factors like small market and, you know, things would uh, matter. But, uh, you know, at least for, the requirement of our country and if quality is good you know we can sell it to the other uh, countries so we must uh, you know promote these things as uh, we all mentioned uh, the buyback guarantees is small as the market is smaller uh, the other thing is when it comes to India so India has very good manufacturers so they have merged with uh, uh, you know international companies and they do they, 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 they maintain their standards, no two words about it. But on the other hand, they have thousands of, uh, hundred thousands of uh, people getting in, uh, <laughs> you know, manufacturing drugs at houses, cottage industry, right? So that's why, uh, so when I was there, the drug authority, the regional office, uh, uh, WHO regional office try to have a, uh, uh, an alliance uh, like uh, ASEAN for zero region. So we discussed this when we met at international uh, uh, workshops or seminars or whatever. And India always <laughs> avoided, <laughs> right? Uh, India being the giant in the region, uh, don't misunderstand, they avoided. And because uh, if they don't want to discuss about it, because then they, they <laughs> you know, the reason, because they have very good uh, manufacturing sites like Cipla. You know, most of these cancer drugs, you know, were very, very expensive. But when Cipla came into the market, you know, they, the prices came down, you know, to a very low, this thing. But because of this cottage industry, uh, thing, you know, they don't want to discuss this. <laughs> Something uh, related to my uh, directorate, perspective of my directorate. Um, now, uh, when we go to uh, OPD in a hospital, we see the practices of polypharmacy and irrational use of antibiotics. That is why there are a lot of medication errors as well as it will directly, it will uh, Irrational use of antibiotics, so uh, we can't prevent this uh, threat of AMR. Uh, still, we are unable to control these, uh, these practices. And when you go to the primary level care, the other problem is uh, there's no uninterrupted supply of drugs that is maybe due to the uh, issues in the supply chains. But some countries like uh, England, they are controlling these things in using different mechanisms. For example, uh, general practitioner uh, can prescribe some drugs 
but the the patient has to pay for that so they will automatically they will, there is no poly pharmacy practice in nhs uk another thing is even somebody can go and buy from the boots pharmacy so that the supply chain problems are not there so these countries they have controlled this problem by uh, uh, working in different perspective sri lanka we know that we have our own issues and our culture and other things but uh, still i like to see that kushlani is here so and uh, the uh, direct uh, dd msd also here now the problem is uh, somehow whether we have to control this poly pharmacy and irrational use of antibiotics otherwise we are still uh, again the next year also we are this is the same issue so i think sometimes we have, may have to think out of the box and put in some uh, solutions um, so so what kind of arrangements we can be made in sri lanka within our context so that is i think not on the panelists i am asked in the forum as well yeah if you don't mind i just make some comments because actually i sit on three procurement committees for drugs to two on the spc and one for a hospital maligavat um a lot of things uh, topics that i wanted to raise have been raised uh, one is the manufacturing scheme because i think our policy was to try and encourage local manufacture and as i said we can ensure better quality because i don't know how much ndql ndqal can do frankly i don't think they can do much we haven't developed it enough to be able to you know test and that's always a problem for us we are always procuring drugs without really be ensuring whether there is actually a quality product coming into the market you know i mean we are relying on others uh, so that that is one area uh, the other is as uh, as you quite rightly said brought up the quality the idea of quality is is a issue and the irrational prescription of drugs that is not a that is where we have to actually hit home because it's our people who have to you know be able to do you know stick to the rational way of prescribing drugs so there is that issue will never be solved it's what is within our own control it's within our own ability to you know uh, get a grip on this i, I believe it, it really has to come start from within and uh, certainly i think one thing that might help as uh, professor vajra said is this uh, customized medication packa packaging it's called uh, um, pill pack system i think a pill pack system. yeah so i i think that's 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 really very good when it comes to compliance because i know when we were in hospitals i was at kasa street i mean you find at the bus stand the mothers leave the drugs and go away you know because they have issues taking it now, these are practical things these are what we see as you know on the ground because i mean we can talk theory but at the end of the day we have we have to look at the big picture and even in procurement i mean we see okay the lowest cost drugs are there and yet we know that okay now there are issues here and we have to we have to think of the big picture so you know when the end user says something we do consider that because sometimes they are the people who actually can know what the real the real situation is not just the you know looking when you do e procurement the danger there is you know everything is cut and dry and unfortunately that is not the case on the ground you know i mean we go okay you go for the lowest if they are don't have registration we eliminate them the registered guy uh, puts the price up and the unregistered fellow for whatever reason his price is very much i mean there's a huge difference and uh, yet we are you know in this with this if we go for this we have to also think about issues like that where you know we have to overcome some of these uh, barriers that might end up you know actually compromising what we want at the end of the day and that is to provide a very good uh, service for our people uh, just a few comments on that <laughs> i didn't follow what was going on in the morning but i for the few comments that i we had uh, just now actually i also feel that uh, one thing about this polypharmacy and irrational um, prescribing i think one thing we have to concentrate is to really limit uh, have some you know implementation of these um, regulations I, i mean you can't uh, ex expect everyone to follow the rules without any uh, impl implementation mechanism you know we, the regular checking and auditing has to be in place and maybe some punishments and things have to be in place and also i think you have to limit the availability now even some red light antimicrobials that we have identified uh, about 4 uh, years back are in the market 
even some, I have seen some nurses writing cheats and giving for the patients that this can be purchased, you know, uh, it's just available in any pharmacy, that should not be happening. So this is the thing we have to control. I think we, we need more regu strict regulations and implementation process, so uh, monitoring. So that is very, very important to limit the access to these uh, high-fi antibiotics, high-level antibiotics, and then also to make sure that uh, the guidelines are followed uh, so that you have regular checks and, uh, you know, maybe some sort of uh, punishments. Uh, that sort of thing has to be here. Now, otherwise, in our country, I don't think anyone will follow, even the doctors, you know, uh, like uh, how the seat belt sign, uh, the, the seat belt, wearing the seat belt, you know, that uh, now uh, because of the law and implementation and checking and penalizing, the penalties have led to the, uh, the, you know, the people have to use it now. So other, that is the uh, way that we can uh, change the practices in Sri Lanka. So I don't think just by having guidelines it will happen. So that is one thing. I, I, I believe in that. And then uh, I think the uh, quality also, again, uh, the, the checking, as we said, I mean, I think we need to establish the uh, testing, uh, not only the, the, the effectiveness of the drug, but also the, the, the purity, uh, whether we can take, check for the purity, because most of these um, generic preparations, the problem is that they don't have uh, purity, purity is not adequate and people can get reactions to those dr and, uh, antibiotics as well as other drugs probably. So that sort of checking the proper uh, testing, uh, not only at the beginning, but also post-marketing uh, surveillance has to be in place so that uh, these have to be maintained, the quality uh, of the drugs have to be maintained. So these two, I think, uh, we have to concentrate on uh, in our country, which is a very major problem. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, what you both mentioned, uh, you know, before NMR Act came into force, NDQL was a separate entity, not under the uh, Drug Regulatory Authority. But now it's under same management. That's not a good thing because NMQL should be. Uh, what do you say, uh, it should be independent, right? So they can have a smaller laboratory for the registration pro purposes to check the registration sample, but of course NMAQL must be an independent authority, right? That's one thing. And uh, of course, if we are to um, look for export market, definitely, not only in medicines, uh, in any product, uh, we must have very good quality laboratories because uh, the, those countries will not uh, want to buy substandard uh, products. This has come up at the highest level, which I, uh, I mean, at meetings, which I also attended at that time. Uh, before the budget, you know, th there was a time where, you know, there were discussions with the industrialists uh, about the, you know, about their issues. So most of them came out with this issue of not having quality laboratories. Uh, then, of course, there are many mechanisms to uh, reduce the polypharmacy. One thing uh, which is uh, the, this medical insurance. You know, if I mean, this is something which people don't want to speak about. But anyway, now medical insurance, if you have a medical insurance system, this is a good thing. Though we say it's free healthcare, now out of pocket expenditure is uh, so much, you know. The, and 50% of the, the medicines are, and people go to the outpatient uh, care, I mean, to the, um, you know, private sector. Uh, so if you have a um, this, uh, insurance scheme, you know, that prescription would be checked again by a uh, medical person employed by the insurance company. And if unnecessary drugs are, have been prescribed, that is cut off and they are not re, uh, reimbursed. So that's one way of uh, controlling it. There are so many of these things. And this country, 100% uh, I mean <laughs> democracy is not suitable for this country. Though our people are educated, right? Uh, I mean, uh, free education, this and that, our people are, most people are un indisciplined. Therefore, until, uh, that's what happened in Singapore. You know, first they, enforce laws 
and when the people got used to the thing, only they gradually relax the uh, enforcement of legislation, and then you now people, you know, on their own, uh, got used to, you know, get used to practicing the good thing. So that is what is required. Um, I think if you can go on talking on this, right? Anyway, due to time constraints. Right? I would like to bring this antimicrobial resistant and technological challenges seminar to the end and. I would like to thank our eminent panelists, Dr. Benaragama, Dr. Dolamulle, and Dr. Disanayake in our usual 